Good morning. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> you thought I'd forgotten, didn't you? How are you? Well, it's a nice spring day. We've had a bit of a blow. We've had a bit of rain through. I'm in the red car, so I've got no uh, CCTV, unfortunately. But uh, I haven't made a video for a while, so, oh, hang on. Wing mirrors in. Here we go. Thought I'd just have a quick uh, chat with you. Let you know what's what, what's up. Thank you. So, uh, we're coming up to Easter. We've sent out our statutory, you know, our, our email to everybody saying we're closed for Easter. We give them the uh, DPAS number for emergencies and we give them our, we tell them to ring our surgery number if they have an emergency. I'm pleased to say, you know, as I've said before, because we're quite a preventive practice, we don't really have a lot of emergencies. Most of our emergencies are patients who have been sitting on some festering cavity for 10 years and get a toothache inside to come in. We're getting a lot of people coming in with like a single issue, you know, like I had a lady in yesterday, she got 31 teeth, she didn't, one of her eights hadn't come through and uh, oh that's nice of you, thank you very much. And um, yeah, and but she got a massive great DO in her lower left six. All the other teeth, as far as I can tell, are pretty much okay, but um, this tooth obviously uh, got some decay in it and it had collapsed and that had caused her to come in. So, talking of D-Pass, I'm, I'm having a bit of a nightmare with D-Pass at the moment, especially the WDEAS subsidiary that's been given the job of paying out their insurance claims. The uh, trend in uh, everything a few years ago was to uh, abolish the mutual structure and go over to a formal insurance structure and uh, you know like you know I mean MDU did it a long time ago you know they were they were a mutual and then they went over to not not MDU is it oh I forget the one the one that Rupert Hoverbrow is running or used to run they went to an insurance based uh, and all the indemnity, uh, the independent ind indemnities now, they're, they're not mutuals, they're all um, policy based. Um, and I think it's a tax thing and a, and a liability thing. And I think it's um, also allows them to very strictly define what they will pay out and what they won't. And they always used to say, oh, you know, uh, there was a big there was a big battle, wasn't there, between Rupert Hovenbrows and uh, Kevin Lewis of MDU, of MPS, DPS, I, you know who they are. Um, with the one hand, one saying that they were mutual and while well, they technically gave them the right to refuse a claim that they'd never knowingly refused a claim. And um, the other lot, the R Rupert's lot, who said that uh, insurance ought to be policy based because then at least you knew where you stood. You know, th th there was a, a policy there, so, and it would say definitely yes, this, you're entitled to be paid for this, and no, you're definitely not. So, the um, for the most part, the policy based uh, argument worked because the government favoured it more. They were like, well, there's more certainty for the consumer, you know, and you're not, uh, you know, you're not, not left your hands, your fate in the hands of the greybeards who run your mutual. Um, although, for the most part, the mutuals did a much better job. You know, of, uh, service, but customer benefits and everything. But um, so, how does this apply to DPAS? Well, DPAS was a mutual. Well, they had a, a scheme which had like elements of a mutual approach in that they just said what was covered. And um, although they may have subcontracted that to an, to an insurance company, I don't know. But anyway, they hived the whole thing off, and I'm sure it was a tax thing. They hired the whole uh, section of their business off. That wasn't the monthly collection of monies, the skimming off of the 10% of the whole capitation market. They hived off the that part of the cover that included paying for your teeth if you get a smack in the teeth or 
paying a bit towards cancer if you get cancer and have to stay overnight in a hospital and what and all that stuff. Uh, a cover abroad and all that. They hived it all off to this a separate company called WDEAS, which is just, you know. I mean, the decisions that went into calling it WDEAS and setting up their website are uh, reflective of of the general thinking that's gone into this company. And you would think that this company would be dedicated to paying out claims accurately and fairly, wouldn't you? Accurately and fairly. In the same way as the old DEB did, the DPB did, when they paid the NHS money out. They didn't care if you were earning £100,000 a year. As long as your claims were accurate, fair and <coughs> went through their fraud checks and came out squeaky clean, then good for you, you know, you're working hard. But I've had two problems with WDEAS. One was uh, a bridge where I asked for a fee for a three unit bridge and they gave me less than I'd asked for. And the way they did it was they divided my claim into three and announced that while I was uh, would have been overpaid for the Pontic, so they, in fact they were going to give me what I asked for, which was the lower amount, uh, that I um, was consequentially um, going to get underpaid for the abutments. Um, so, so overall, if they if they'd allocated my claim for the bridge in the ratio abutment Pontic abutment that they use themselves to to you know to describe the fees, then I would have been paid in full. But this, do you know what? And I'm sure, I'm pretty sure. This is not a systematic attempt to try and defraud dentists. This is just incompetence. But you can't really tolerate incompetence in an insurance company that's paying out insurance claims. Um, I, I uh, used to, many, many years ago, I used to do my payroll by hand. And, uh, and uh, then we started using a computerized system. And it was... Um, uh, 1983 I think and we were, they announced that we were going to have a visit from a payroll inspector and so he came round and I duly printed everything out and everything and I said to him what's the you know what's the issue and he said well he said you he said when you used to do your payroll by hand he said I can understand now what's going on you used to do your payroll by hand and he said you're doing something which you're not doing now because you're doing it on the computer and I said really what what am I doing and he said, I can't tell you. I'm not going to tell you. I mean, literally, he was not going to tell me. He's a payroll inspector that come round to inspect and just wouldn't give anything away about what he was inspecting or what we were doing right, what we were doing. So he, he spent a polite half an hour there looking through my printouts and then just left. Case closed. And it's, it's the same with these WDES. They are... They are not administering the scheme, in my opinion, properly. What uh, has happened most recently was that um, we had a patient who had an upper left tooth knocked out. And so um, I said to her, you know, you can have a denture, you can have a bridge, you can have an implant. I did, but the, the denture is a temporary thing, the bridge is a permanent thing, and the implant, the Deep, deep pass, WES won't pay for, but it does say in their literature that if you uh, if you choose to have an implant, then they will allow you to put what they would have paid for a bridge towards the implant, which is good, fair enough, you know, it's more than the NHS will do. So, So sure enough, we worked out that a bridge was about 15.51. So I told her that and I said, this is what the implant's gonna be, this is your shortfall. And, and she's duly paid up. Now, when I came to tell WDAS that uh, the um, implant and the crown had been done, they said, well, 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 you know, we're not paying for a bridge. If you've done an implant, there is now a fee for an implant. So I'm like, okay, well, thanks for not telling me, but Fair enough, we'll amend the claim. So we amended the claim. 
and then they wrote back and said yes thank you instead of giving you 1551 we're going to give you 1500 quid because that is now the new fee for the implant and I'm immediately thinking that's a bit weird because my, my total costs are about 2,700 quid by the time you include the uh, crown and the implant and the whatever. I mean, I don't know what you're interested in the breakdown. Anyway, we knew there was going to be a shortfall and the patient was happy to pay it. But to increase it by another 51 quid by saying that, saying that an implant is uh, 1,500 quid. Well, now they've got an item on their fee scale for a crown. So I would fully expect them to say it's 1500 for the implant plus another 470 plus for the crown, whatever it is. But they're not, they're like, no, the implant includes the crown. And this is the nub of the thing. They're saying the implant includes a crown. Now, I mean, I got some sympathy with this approach because of including the implant uh, and the crown together because we pioneered joint pricing. We were the first in our area, in fact, first in the country for all I know, to quote an implant which included a crown. <coughs> and it wasn't 1,500 quid, I'll tell you that. It's about, it's for two grand, 1999 I think we did it at. But, um, So, so I'm all in favour of uh, transparent pricing. And the reason why we did that was because we used to get patients bringing up and saying, how much is it to have an implant? And I'd say, the implant to uh, 1,500 quid. And they would say, well, uh, okay, I, uh, can I come in? I'd like to come in and have an implant. And I'd say, well, yeah, well, don't forget, you have to work out what we're going to put on top of that. Uh, are we going to put a crown on top? In which case, there'd be another 500 quid for the crown. And they're like, oh, well, that's a bit of sharp practice, you know, quoting for an implant and then, but then saying that that's not going to solve my problem with, unless I spend another 500 pound on a crown. So I got so fed up with people saying this that I, I used to say to them, it's 19.99 and that includes the crown. And I said that, and also when you're getting quotes from other dentists, just check it includes the crown. Just ask them, what is the cost for an implant and a crown? Because... You know, why, oh, why, why? Well, because an implant doesn't just have to support a crown. It can support a denture, it can support a bridge. An implant is just a building block. It supports whatever you stick on top of it. So, <clears throat> here we are. We've got DPAS delegating their claims payment to WDES that's got a fee for an implant and it's got a fee for a crown, which is roughly in line with the industry standards. Which, if you was fifteen hundred for the implant, four seventy for the crown, in nineteen seventy, wouldn't be too far off what a patient would expect to pay for that sort of work. Fifteen fifty, fifteen fifty, fifteen seventy eight, I think, is their updated price for the bridge. Uh, so that's what we're comparing. We're comparing nineteen seventy for an uh, implant supported crown plus. Um, 1578 for, for, for a bridge and you know I don't see how the only thing I can think is that uh, this is not a dent I'm not talking to a dentist because the idea that an implant supported crown would come in on a fee scale less than a bridge I just don't understand unless the price of implants has fallen out of bed you know while I was asleep But, you know, we've got this sort of problem all over the place. We, we, I had a delightful young boy in, eight years old or something, but with four rotten sixes. Needs to have them extracted, ASAP, really. So I referred him into the community dental service. No, we won't accept the referral. Why won't you accept the referral? Because you said he's, he's a pleasant young lad and he's compliant. Therefore, he, he could be done in general practice. So, and I said, well, I can't do it in general practice because I don't have an NHS contract. I'm just the NHS emergency service. I'm, I'm the schmuck that picks up all the patients that get that the, the, the NHS can't see. And with children usually free of charge. And in the old days I would have referred this kid to the community dental service and they would have picked up the ball and just bloody run with it and done the necessary. But no, they're like, oh well 
you know, uh, you said he's he's a pleasant young lad, and therefore he's a great uh, class one category or something or other, and um, therefore we're not going to take him, and we don't care whether you've got an NHS contract or not. Basically, that's what they said. And I'm like, well, you know, if you can't take him on, I'm referring him into the NHS. And if you can't triage him and make sure he gets referred to someone within the NHS who can see him, then who who the hell am I to do all your admin? You know, who the hell am I to try and work out who within the National Health Service can take this child on? I saw him once, free of charge, as an emergency. And, and, and from 40 years experience knew what happened. But I'm fighting an algorithm. And the woman who... Uh, told me no, you know, said no, sorry, no, as, you know, I've written, I've written back to her and I said, look, I just want to know what is your GDC number, because I can't find you, I can't find her name on the register, not as anything, she's not even a nurse, you know, she's not even a dental nurse, she's not a hygienist, she's not a therapist, fire girls can tell she's not a dentist, but here she is telling me what should happen to this kid clinically. Now I'll tell you what will happen to him if if he has those sixes out under local anaesthetic in an eight in an NHS dental practice, he will uh, be phobic for the rest of his life. That will be the last time he goes to see the dentist until he's forty. But the algorithm doesn't know that. Do you know what I mean? The quickest way to make him unfriendly and uncooperative and a difficult child will be will be. <laughs> Will be to refer him into general practice to have four sixes out under local anaesthetic at the age of eight. Now, if you're a wizard, you know, if you're a, like a Helen Chapman and you're a wizard with children, then get in touch, get in touch, because I've got a guy in East Kent who's, who really needs your help. But nobody will. But it'll be interesting to see what this woman says about, you know, whether she's on, on the GDC register. I mean, I strongly suspect she isn't. And she's going to take great umbrage with me uh, challenging her ability, her power, to argue with dentists about what should um, happen on clinical grounds. But, you know, I'm, I'm just argumentative. That's just the way I am. But I'll let you know how it works out. I'll let you know how the um, implant claim works out. Because I'm, I'm quite prepared to take my business away from DPAS. If I could get away from Simply Health, because there's no point taking it to Demplan, because they're both owned by the same bloody people. But if I can, uh, if I can get my business away from them, I will. Because I'm, I'm not at all happy with how they're um, uh, uh, fiddling me. You know, fiddling me, trying to fiddle me. You know, and, and a lot of dentists would just say, because it's the patient's claim. That's the thing. It's the patient's claim, it's not my claim. <clears throat> they don't pay. Then I just write to the patient and say, Look, I'm sorry, you're 470 quid short because they won't pay for the crown. Only the implant. And they say it includes the crown. So, so I'd like another 470 quid off you. You know. But is it fair, you know, is it fair for the patients? They're, they're, they're diddling the patients. Is it fair for me to let them do that? I don't think so. I, mean, I have to go to bat for this patient, don't I? I have to. Um, fortunately, she's very good. And I say to her, look, you know, I'm, I've appealed this and I've appealed this. and I've, I've done it all in your name, blah, blah, blah. Is that all right? And she's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, fine. She's happy. All right, okay. That's my woes so far. I'll um, talk to you later. Okay. Nice to talk to you. Bye.